Hey guys, my name is Mark and I do STEM education and today we're going to be talking about the coral reef cleanup. Wait, the co coral reef as in like tropics? Hang on a second. Oh, that is so much better. Oh, and guys, this activity is really so much fun because you're going to program a robot that is going to clean up our world's oceans. There's so much trash and plastic and garbage in the ocean. And so we do need people like you to become engineers and to solve those problems. And so in this video, we're going to program a little robot to go out and pick up all the trash. So let's, without any further ado, go on and get into it. The guidance subsystem uses deviations to generate corrective commands to drive the missile from a position where it is to a position where it isn't, and arriving at a position where it wasn't, it now is. All right, uh, got to fix my hair a little bit. Um, but here we are at uh, vr.vex.com. And uh, I hope you found uh, that uh, fun. Uh, let's go ahead and click on playground up here in the upper right. And uh, this playground, I mean, it, it's fun. Uh, it's It's got all these wonderful moving graphics and everything. Uh, I definitely recommend that you expand it. Uh, take the uh, the data away, change the camera view and let's just look and just pan around. Look at that. Isn't that so beautiful except for the garbage? I mean, you know, you want to be able to see the beauty, the coral and the fishies and everything, but we got this nasty garbage here bothering us. Okay. Well, the really cool thing about this, uh, playground is that they made it so that it's kind of it's a challenge and you'll notice that the timer went away and instead we have uh, the battery for the robot and uh, when the robot's moving around it consumes more battery power but here's kind of the here's kind of the cruel trick right when i push play if the program is running the battery is draining the battery is going down just because the program's running. There's nothing else happening. But the thing that I noticed, and it took me a while, and I actually recorded a lot of data on this, and I put it in a spreadsheet and everything. I, I did several trials. Was that the battery doesn't drain as fast when it's doing nothing. And that's going to be important here in a moment um, to know that, hey, you know, all this trash is now fallen on the surface and it's ready to be picked up. Uh, I just need to get my robot to get over there and get it. Okay. So let's go into the code. And what I want to, I want you to think about this for a second. If you've seen my video on the dynamic castle crasher, what are you programming the robot to do there? You're programming it to find an object and go at it. Right? So check this out. Let's just see what happens if we make the robot drive forward. Okay? You should always experiment, right? Okay? I'm going to click stop and try again. And then I'll go ahead and click play. Now my robot's going to drive forward. And hey, look at that total trash collected. One kilogram. We got one kilogram less. The tra Oh, I damaged the coral reef. Like, that's not good. <laughs> I want my robot... To be doing good to clean things not to mess them up so i need to make sure that it's only going after stuff uh the trash now fortunately my robot's eye is only able to see trash you know they've done a lot of the work for me right so i can make it so that it just drives when it sees trash and if it doesn't see trash it just turns to look for trash all right so let's go ahead and do that. Now that's a control of an if else. So we're gonna say very, very basically, if my robot, I'm gonna go under sensing, if my robot found an object, then I'm going to drive forward. So we'll go to the drivetrain and drive forward. 
Now, if my robot did not find an object, it's going to turn right, okay? Now, the thing about if statements is it only checks the value, you know, one time, and then it moves on to the next part of the code. Well, if there's nothing else left, that means it's just gonna check this once and then move on. So I have to put another control statement in here called forever. So I have to forever check if it's seeing an object. If it is, drive forward. If it is not, then turn right. So it'll say, am I seeing an object? Yes, okay, drive forward. And then it skips the turn right. And then it goes back around and it says, am I seeing an object? No, okay, turn right. Am I seeing an object? No, okay, turn right. Am I seeing an object? No, okay, turn right. Am I seeing an object? Yes. It continues to do that over and over and over. Okay. Um, so let's just see what our robot does when we have just that very simple algorithm of if I see something, drive forward. If I do not see it, drive or turn right. Oh, look at that. Turning right, getting trash. There we go. Woo. And my battery's going down. And you're probably already thinking like, oh, but if I could get it to go get the, the piece of trash that's closer or um, what's something's going to happen here in a little bit. We're going to it's going to we're going to have to wait a minute for it to happen. Um, but our robot's driving kind of slow. Let's let's make our robot drive a little bit faster. Let's because I'm I mean, I'm just getting impatient here. Um, let's go ahead and and fast forward through this part just to see what it does. And then I'll make a change and then we'll see what it does. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and just fast forward through this part and see what happens. Okay. 54 kilograms, 54 kilograms of garbage has been removed. Congratulations, way to go. Uh, my robot's battery ran out. So is there a way that I can get it to go for longer um, and get more garbage? So the great thing is I can try again. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click try again. And this time I'm gonna see what happens if I set my drivetrain uh, turn velocity, come on, uh, to 50%, the drive velocity to 100%. And the turn velocity, it's also under drivetrain, the turn velocity to 100%. Now, is it going to consume more power if it drives faster? It seems like it would. I don't know. Let's find out. All right, 37 kilograms. Um, but that's still quite a bit less than what we just did in the robot drove way slower. So is it better to drive slower? In this case, yeah, it seems like it is. But let's try something else and let's see if we can get an even better score here. All right, so I'm gonna close that. And instead of changing the speed, I think what I'll have it do is actually just wait for more trash to fall. Um, so under control, I'm gonna put a wait and I'm gonna make it just wait for 60 seconds. Now, it's crazy because, you know, when we pr press start, it's like the robot is activated. And so if this was real, if this was under the ocean and the robot's activated, it's gonna use some power just to be activated. All right. So this is fairly realistic. Uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's shrink this down and let's watch the timer off to the right. Uh, I think we need to turn on timer under sensing. So we'll click this, we'll go to sensing. Yeah, timer in seconds. So we should be able to see it over there, okay? And this is where I got a bunch of data on how fast uh, the battery drained, uh, how long it took it to, um, you know, to clean up at 100% speed versus 
50% speed versus 25% speed, you could probably try something that I didn't think of and get a much higher score than I did. So let's just try this one right now. And uh, let's go ahead. Oh, I need to click uh, try again. So it resets. And now I'll go ahead and click play. And let's see that go. All right, that time 57. Um, really interesting, isn't it? That a lot of trash fell and and we left some trash on the ground and we ran out of battery power. Now, if you watch the fast one, we we were a few times we had already cleared everything off and we were waiting for more to fall. So I bet you could think of a way to maybe if the robot has found everything to kind of shut down for a minute and then go get more, uh, or we could try something else. And I'm gonna try one more thing just to show you how you can try these different variations of things and get a totally different score. And you might come up with something creative that somebody else maybe hasn't thought of and you know get a really high score. And it really, a lot of it is gonna come with uh, patience and trial and error. So. I'm going to do the combination of those two things. I'm going to have the robot wait for 60 seconds, but then I want it to go hurry up fast and get all of the trash. And I think that this might be maybe um, my best run. And so let's see what happens. Okay, let's reset and let's go. Would you look at that 61 and a half kilograms. So we tried something. It worked pretty good. We tried something else. It didn't work that great. We put them together and it actually worked the best. So guys, try your own variation of this. Try your own creative ideas. Um, play around with it. Make one change. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your scores down below. And if you did like that video, feel free to leave me a like and a comment down below. Um, maybe on my silly hat or whatever it is that you want to say. Uh, and maybe click that join button and see what that's all about. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.